In case you're new to this channel, I'm in the midst of a 31 day challenge where I have a measly $100 to spend on groceries. When I was planning this project, I knew that I needed to start off with a complete but cost effective pantry. And I was able to put one together for only $32.62. In this video, I'm gonna take you through what I got and why I deemed each item necessary. And if you stick around to the end, I'll break down the pricing and let you know where I got all these items for these prices. Let's start by talking about what pantry ingredients are. People have different definitions for this, but in my mind, there are three keys. First, they need to be shelf stable, so they can be kept at room temperature and not need refrigeration. Next, they have to have a long shelf life. They should be able to last a few months without going bad. This is important because you wanna keep pantry staples on hand for whenever you need them. If they go bad quickly, you'll be constantly needing to refresh your stock and it raises the likelihood that you won't have that item when you need it. Finally, a pantry staple must be able to be used in a wide variety of recipes. This allows you to buy those ingredients in a higher quantity, which is more cost effective, without being locked into only making specific meals. I divided my pantry staples into different categories. Those are grains, leaveners, fats and acids, sweets, spices and seasonings, and sundry. So let's start with grains. These ingredients will be used with more flavorful components, rounding them out into full meals, or in some cases, be whole meals themselves. Flour is endlessly versatile. It can be used in thousands of different baked goods, including, of course, bread, also dumpling wrappers, pasta, and a myriad of other things. It can also be used for thickening soups and sauces, and even be made into a leavener, as we'll discuss in a bit. Flour is arguably the most important item on the list. I went with all-purpose flour since it's the most cost-effective and can be used in place of any specialty flour like bread flour or rye. Rice has nearly as many uses as flour. It can be eaten on its own as a meal or fill out dishes like curry or chicken soup. It can be made into a porridge called kanji or juk, which was my breakfast for almost the entire first week of this challenge. It can also be made into a dessert, a flour, or even a milk. Leaveners. There are a few different methods to make flour-based foods light and airy, but the main practice is through the use of leaveners. For my pantry, I got two kinds of leaveners. The first are biological leaveners. They use yeast, a single-celled fungus, to convert sugars into carbon dioxide. Active dry or instant yeast are the most common examples of this, but that can get pretty expensive at $1.72 per three pack. So on day one, I also began a sourdough starter. Sourdough starters are active cultures of the wild yeast that lives in the air around us. They only require water and flour. There are plenty of videos on how to make sourdough starters, so we're not gonna get into that here, but they usually take more than a week to get ready, so I got the active dry yeast to use in the meantime. I also got baking powder, which is a chemical leavener, in case I ran out of yeast before my starter was ready. Also, a lot of recipes call for only chemical leaveners, so it's handy to have on hand. Fats and acids. Fats act as a cooking medium and can change the texture of whatever you're cooking or baking. It can also be used as a source of flavor if you're using something like olive oil or coconut oil. But all I had for my budget this month was a large bottle of vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is a neutral oil and doesn't really taste like anything, but it has a nice high spoke point so I can use it for high and low temperature cooking. For acid, I was only able to get one type of vinegar. I splurged a little bit and got rice vinegar, which is not the cheapest type of vinegar, but I find that I like the flavor and it could be used in a variety of ways. Sweet. Similar to the other categories, I was forced to pick just one type of sweetener to use in my pantry. But this might surprise some of you. Instead of granulated sugar, I actually went with light brown sugar. Light brown sugar can be cheaper than granulated sugar, especially at lower quantities. This was great for when I made syrup with my pancakes, but you do have to be careful because granulated sugar and brown sugar don't behave exactly the same in different baked goods. On the whole, I've been pretty happy using this. Spices and seasonings. In making my budget, I found that I could only allot $4 to spices that I was gonna be using this month. And these are a great example about how variable prices at a grocery store can be. In the spice aisle, you should be able to find a section where they have a few basic spices for around a dollar each. If they don't have it there, check the international section. If they don't have any cheap spices there, find another grocery store to shop at. A lot of these name brand spices are hundreds of percent higher in cost than the generic ones you should be able to find. I could have gotten four spices for about a dollar each, but instead I decided to get three and spend a little bit more money on one of them. What I purchased was cumin, garlic powder, and curry spice mix. I knew I was going to be making some Indian and South American inspired cuisine, so cumin was gonna be important. And to be honest, I put garlic powder in almost every savory sauce that I make. Curry powder isn't something I use very often, but I knew with ingredients like turmeric, ground ginger, and coriander, it would be a powerful flavor boost when I needed it. It did a great job making up for the spices that I didn't have when I made my black bean curry. 
I use black pepper so much that it was its own line item in my budget. Normally, I don't like these built on grinder bottles, but a regular bottle of peppercorns was way outside my price range. So I settled for something that was a higher per ounce price, but was a lower price overall. Pre-ground pepper is so much less flavorful, it wasn't even considered. Salt was another splurge purchase because it was also in the running for the most important ingredient in this list. With a limited spice budget, it was important to bring out the flavors of the other ingredients I was using this month. I want the carrots to taste more carroty, I want the onions to taste more oniony, and I needed to maximize the flavor flavor of those three spices. Salt was the key in doing that. Now I knew I could get more than a pound and a half of table salt for only 57 cents, but in order to be as accurate as I could with the seasoning, I needed to go with kosher salt. The difference between table salt and kosher salt is well documented, and I'm not gonna get into those differences here. Long story short, I actually went 12 cents over budget and got a three pound box of kosher salt. That way I knew it would easily take me through the month and I wouldn't feel like I needed to skimp. Sundry. In addition to the basic necessity of some of the previous categories, these ingredients will help to add flavor and turn some of the bulk ingredients into full meals. Dried black beans are chock full of protein. Once they're cooked, they can be added to rice or made into patties, but I used most of mine for the black bean curry, which was packed with flavor and yielded about 20 meals. Canned tomatoes we use in the curry as well, but I also use them in tomato sauce and they have a bunch of other applications. Peanut butter has been a well-used ingredient this month since most of my lunches in the first week were peanut butter sandwiches. I'm also hoping to make peanut butter cookies at some point, but I'm gonna have to find an eggless recipe since eggs have apparently become more valuable than platinum. Wrapping up the list, we have hot sauce. As silly as it sounds, this can be a total lifesaver, especially when you're on day three of leftovers, you're getting tired of the same meal, and you need something to spice it up. A couple dashes of hot sauce will change the flavor and add some heat to keep things interesting. I was surprised how much I liked this little hot sauce and I got it for only 88 cents. For all of these items, I only paid $32.62. I actually got everything here except for two of the spices from Walmart. The other two spices were from a local grocery store. Of course, I can't guarantee prices in your area or at the time you're watching this, but this is what I paid for each item. Go ahead and screenshot this so you can save it and compare it to what you have near you. If there are any big discrepancies that you see at your stores, I wanna hear about it. Go ahead and leave a comment below. And that does it for this week's video. If you wanna follow along my $100 grocery store challenge, there's still time. Go ahead and check me out on Instagram and TikTok for real-time updates. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.